Crime and deviance can be defined as a behavior that violates established laws, expectations, and or social norms. One way that many people act in deviant forms is through protest. theoretical approaches to crime and deviance. These theories partially revolve around how individuals react to strain and conflict caused by society due to political, economic, or cultural factors. An example of how individuals can be affected by certain organizations or group that lead to crime or deviance is terrorism. Terrorism is using force or violence against people to coerce either citizens or government to further an ideal. One example of this type of terrorism is white supremacy. Police in Tennessee are braced for further demonstrations after neo-Nazis and white nationalists held a rally in two cities to protest against refugee resettlement in the state. Calling it a White Lives Matter march, Groups including the Nationalist Front and the League of the South gathered in Shelbyville and Murfreesboro. Their message to immigrants, you're not wanted here. Well, I say immigrants, I'm actually using the wrong word. They're actually conquerors, and uh, that's the thing we need to understand. They're here. We're, most white people are handing them the keys to our country. In order to understand the roots of the terrorism we see today, specifically the roots of white supremacy, it is important to look back on the history and look at what dissensions may have led up to it. It is clear that Europe reigned as a hegemonic power over the entirety of the world. We believe that this dominance is due to the Europeans' need for access to trade. Emmanuel Wallerstein is an important influencer in this ideal. Wallerstein speaks about the world systems theory. He believes that a core country is one that contributes greatly to trade throughout the world, which throughout most of history has included Europe. These core countries were able to take control of periphery countries in the New World and Africa because the periphery countries relied so heavily on the goods and services provided by the core countries. Wallerstein talks about how the world economy is what allows a country to expand its influence. Europe needed more resources to fuel their growing empire, so they sought to trade with new countries. Influx of trade and the blossoming of the Industrial Revolution led to the necessity of labor. So where exactly were Europeans going to get this labor, you ask? From the African countries, leading the transatlantic slave trade, creating the socioeconomic divide and racism that we can still see today. 
These economies in other countries, such as Africa, were not fulfilling the needs of Europe. So the Europeans took control of the periphery countries, growing their dominance in the modern world. European domination led to a strong sense of white power, and because Africans were slaves for a long period of time, the belief in white power continued to prevail. White supremacy divided classes so that white people were considered to have high social status and colored people were considered to be under them with a lower social class. People would believe that white is standard, normal, and better than other races. This belief led to terrorism, since some white people still believe that they are superior to other races, specifically African Americans. Some of these white people feel the need to exert their power and show how strongly they believe in these things, even if they are not true and the individual is just having personal issues instead. While there are many examples of white supremacy organizations, the Ku Klux Klan being one of them, there are also many instances in which these individuals have become terrorists and made other people either lose their lives or fear for their lives due to an irrational belief that whites are superior to other races. Charlottesville is one of the best examples to show white supremacy in action. In this instance, a car drove through a rally, leaving many people injured and one person dead. We begin tonight with that breaking news, a horrific scene in Charlottesville, Virginia, a white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence and chaos. The image is just coming in, a car plowing into a crowd of demonstrators protesting against those white nationalists. A 32-year-old woman killed a number of severe injuries, many life-threatening. A driver has been taken into custody. On the streets of Charlottesville today, the hate boiling over white supremacists and countered protesters fighting with fists and clubs. Confederate flags on full display, the governor declaring a state of emergency, and that mayhem unfolded for hours before President Trump finally weighed in. This terrorism due to white supremacy has not only happened in the USA, but has also occurred globally. According to the Washington Post, white terrorism is an international menace, as it is also extremely prevalent in Europe and other areas of the globe. Throughout this video, you may have been wondering why these people feel that they need to act in such a way to get their point across. One theory that we can use to explain terrorism and white supremacy more specifically is the general strain theory or GST. GST was developed by Robert Agnew and it has accumulated a significant amount of empirical evidence. GST attempts to explain phenomena outside of criminal behavior and believes that humans face strains or difficulties in their lives and choose to deal with these strains in unhealthy ways, such as through crime or aggressive behavior. There are four characteristics of the general strain theory. The first one being that strains are seen as unjust. Strains are seen as high in magnitude. Strains are associated with low social control and finally, strains create some pressure or incentive to engage in criminal coping. We can apply this theory to the idea of white supremacy to try to figure out why these individuals are acting in such a way. Most likely, they are trying to deal with something in their own lives that caused them to want to exert dominance and looking back at white supremacy, these people exert dominance by arguing that they are better than the other races. The Europeans clearly demonstrated that having money attributes to an influx of power. This, in turn, sets up the class divide between races that we can still see today. The disparity between them allows one race to feel superior to another. The class divide of superiority and influx of power permits terrorist groups such as the white supremacists to commit crimes and act in ways that are deviant. 